Sir, legal is a line item called 4153. Something <coughs> called legal expense. Yes, I see that. Okay. And uh, all right, so I would move it. I hope I got the right number, Christy. I'm watching. Thank you. I appreciate it. 220000 Nice to have a safety net. $188. That's right. Got that, Barbara? 220188. Legal expense. Okay. Do second. we have a second? Yeah, Mr. Yeah, Plouffe is going to second that, Barbara. All right. Let's go right into this budget. Okay, the 2018 budget of the legal department, as you see, in terms of the uh, lines and sublines, is broken down into two sections. First section is the <coughs> town attorney's office, which is basically the internal workings, and the second part is legal expenses, which is the external, that is outside counsel and outside expenses. And so. Uh, as you can see, the two major increases that over last year are reflected uh, have to do first with the outside counsel fees, and the second has to do with litigation expenses. Um, I have given the board a uh, memorandum which includes the list of <coughs> the items of litigation that are currently pending and which uh, are basically the, the fact of them is public information and uh, who is handling those by way of either inside or outside. And I have also uh, broken down for you the uh, figure of outside legal counsel that has been paid <coughs> through October 31, 2017 by firm. Uh, because I understand the you you have the uh, outside you have the uh, the, Oct the October monthly financials, and even though the budget book that you have page eleven and twelve uh, reflects through end of September, uh, I wanted to uh, report to you based on the latest monthly statement, and then the. Uh, third item uh, that I've given you ha is a chart that shows the history of the legal department and the expenditures uh, starting with the first year of the in-house legal department 2003. Uh, just to uh, highlight the two um, major areas of increase, um, if you look historically at that last chart, and I have extra copies if anybody doesn't have them. Okay. <coughs> Thank you. Um, you will see that the outside counsel expenses uh, fluctuate over time uh, depending on, on, on events and uh, demands. And so uh, when you're looking at, for instance, uh, periods of time, um, in uh, 2005 forward under labor and council and collective bargaining, uh, you will see that there were uh, large uh, years in terms of dollar expenditures. And then in recent times, those have uh, dramatically decreased. Um, I wanted to indicate to you that for those particular items, uh, there are um, the, the decrease over time reflects the fact that the labor matters are being handled largely in-house with a combination of the um, assistant town manager and myself. Uh, in particular, collective bargaining, uh, we have spent uh, zero dollars <coughs> this year. Uh, and that has been uh, largely the case for the last two budget cycles before. Um, also, other labor costs, uh, actual so far, are zero. And that uh, is also a reflection of, of how much we're handling uh, in-house. Now, there are, um, for various reasons, uh, outside counsel is therefore uh, handling outside council, uh, outside council matters de as determined by the Board of Selectmen um, for any number of reasons. Uh, but um, we're in one of those uh, cycles of cases, as you can see here, where uh, 
where there are several matters in which outside counsel is involved and which uh, will be continuing for, for a period of time. Um, and the figure that you see here for our outside counsel, the increase of 30,000 up to 60,000, is basically my best judgment of how to budget for that, not knowing exactly what level of effort is going to be made, what cases may be resolved, and therefore it will not entail further expenditures. And uh, that's just my best judgment. Likewise, uh, when you get to the litigation expenses, the increase of uh, from uh, 7,387 to 15,000 is likewise a reflection of what kind of um, mostly expert expenses that are going to be involved in pursuit of those cases. And just by way of an example for this year, uh, you may have noticed that a number of matters uh, have involved uh, the expertise of Professor Thomas Ballestero from UNH in such cases as the large groundwater withdrawal permit that Aquarian Water is seeking, uh, the fact that uh, Aquarian wells have shown uh, PFCs in, in levels that are of concern, and uh, outside expertise of Professor Ballestero, who's a widely renowned expert, has been very important. Um, in the case of the PFCs and where they're coming from, we've needed to get the attention of EPA and the DES uh, to, to uh, represent the town's interests, and it, was it has been critical to have Professor Ballestero involved. And so of the amount that you have, that has been expended to date, um, Professor Ballestero uh, has uh, been paid $6,213 of, of that amount. And uh, given the items that are uh, <coughs> pending on the list of pending matters, uh, I would expect that several of those will continue into the future and will require uh, his involvement in particular. Um, and so that, I think, covers the two major items of increase in this budget. Uh, under the in-house, uh, that reflects a 4% increase in my salary that was already given by the Board of Selectmen effective April 1, 2017. So that is the, uh, how that carries over for a full year. Okay. And so that is that, is that budget. Thank you very much, Mark. I, Thank you. Um, I do want to say one other ahead, thing, yeah. Mr. Chairman, if you don't mind. Um, your sheet shows on the second sheet, which is page 12, <coughs> an estimated revenues for 2017 of $3,400. Mm -hmm. um, that estimated revenues figure is, uh, comes about from my department's review at the planning board's uh, request of documents such as condominium declarations, uh, easements, uh, and so forth. And uh, in actuality, that revenue projection for 2017 is very short because uh, this year uh, we've had approximately 14 matters where the planning board has assigned us to do uh, review of documents. And the kind of projects we are reviewing are of increasing complexity. And the figure that we have already credited uh, is $9,682. And that, that'll, of course, come up with revenue. In the year 2016, there were only seven such matters, and uh, they, did not, uh, they did not have the kind of complexity we're seeing now. Um, and so, uh, I, if in follow-up to what Jason Bashand had to tell you about planning, uh, we're, we're in a cycle where there's a great deal of activity, uh, which in turn entails um, reviews of complex documents, mm -hmm. which are done in-house. Yeah. Thank you very much. Hold on, David. Um, I wanted to mention that um, I recently watched the selectmen's meeting and the conversation, Dr. Ballestaro, uh, the PFCs, um, Aquarian water, <coughs> very and 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 there the the selectmen are right on top of this. And you're you're working, I think it was a 60-40 deal with Northampton, as well. 
Um, That's correct. And this is a very big deal, very, very big deal. So selectmen are doing a good job. You're doing a good job as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, David, you had a question or comment? It's a caution based upon what you just said. Okay. <clears throat> With the PFCs and you got this challenge from UNH and realizing he has to be paid and we're paying him his dues. But isn't Aquarium responsible for that? Shouldn't you be, should they pay you back or? It's, you know, it's on their land with their water that they're charging different people for. <coughs> Aren't they responsible for those charges? Could you help me with that, please? Well, the, the thing about that is Aquarian has its own, it's a private company. It's now, as of two days ago, owned by Eversource. No longer there, in a way. They have their own. Uh, feelings about what they're willing to spend to address the problem. Uh, we may or may not agree with them. I think they're doing a great job in terms of studying where the PFCs are coming from. Uh, we may or may not have disagreements, and I think you may have seen that the selectmen were uh, somewhat split on the issue of, of how best at this point to approach the issue of treatment. Uh, because we are dealing with a PFCs as an, an emerging contaminant. It's addressed differently throughout the country. <coughs> Some states are more sensitive to it than others. Uh, believe it or not, New Jersey is more sensitive than, than the federal government. Uh, Vermont is another. Um, it's, a, it's, it's a matter of how much can you tolerate. And uh, our job, I believe, is to make sure that Aquarian is looking out not for the bottom line, but for the, the best health of its customers. Right. Likewise with the EPA. And I believe we'll, we, we are best served if we rely on our own expertise than relying on, let's say, the expertise of an EPA and or even... So you're doing it in a sense, which I hear you in. It makes sense, and I agree with what you're saying. You want to do it as a double check. You're not going to just take their numbers. You want to validate them. <coughs> Is that correct? Well, it, it, it goes a little beyond that because in, an, in a field of emerging contaminants, so-called, yeah. that's the words they use, uh, it's very easy to say that, oh, the maximum contaminant level that satisfies the federal government should give us comfort. I, I would disagree. I think we deserve better than that. Yeah, and um, someone like a Dr. Ballestero who appeared at the Northampton meeting of EPA lately on the Coakley landfill, I think EPA was just going to step back and say, well, they've got enough monitoring as is. But after listening to Tom, Professor Ballestero, who was the professor to several of the people who, who are involved with EPA, they said, let's have your notes and comments. And he's provided those. So I, I think being proactive in this field is really something that is, is what is needed uh, for our, our customers. And, and just one other point, it, to the extent that, that uh, Aquarian spends money on this subject, they pass that right through to the customers anyway. So it's, it's a question of uh, a paying one place or another. Left hand or the right, but I totally agree with having a second opinion and coming to the right numbers because that's poisoning. You have too much of poisoning the people. Absolutely. Everybody. So I'm, I'm with you. I'm not fighting you. Oh no, I understand. I, I appreciate. I'm just trying to understand. It, I appreciate all. you're giving me the chance to explain it. It's really important. Thank you. All set, David. Yes, Sonny. Yeah, uh, I attended a, a, a Rockingham planning session meeting on the water. The ES had four of their people there. Okay. The, con the census at, at that meeting was that DES is going to monitor it. The federal EPA says that it's not up to the level of <coughs> risk. There has to be a solution to Copley, which is eventually it'll, because the bottom isn't sealed, eventually they'll have to move it. But I mean, the state's monitoring. He was quite clear. He says they'll watch it. Aquarium is watching it. You know, why are we suing them? We're not. Okay. But you were talking about 
Um, no, uh, Professor Ballestero is it's it's under litigation expenses, but that's that's where our expert is. That's where the expert expenses come in. It could be potential litigation, but uh, I want to give you an example. Uh, this recently, when Eversource sought to acquire Aquarian, that acquisition came about at a time where there were many issues that we have with Aquarian: the large groundwater withdrawal permit. Uh, the presence of PFCs in the wells, um, a number of other subjects that needed to be addressed. And we, we weren't sure how Eversource was going to deal with this company that they were acquiring, what their attitudes would be. So um, my office, anyway, spent a great deal of time working with Eversource and Aquarian and developed an agreement whereby we got commitments from Eversource and Aquarian to do the monitoring you're talking about, to do the uh, analysis of treatment <coughs> alternatives. And so uh, I, I, what I say to you is that it's very easy for important issues like this to get lost in the shuffle where you're just, where two companies are talking about an acquisition uh, and who's going to manage things. So it was important for us to be proactive to, um, to make sure that our issues would not be left aside. Well, Eversource just bought the stock. Their aquarium is going to run under the, with their own people, and they'll be responsible. But, I mean, the issue is the state is just uh, saying they'll monitor it. So that's not satisfactory? Well... Again, this is an emerging field. PFCs are an, emer are an emerging field. And we, we have a problem here. We have wells that just starting in June, Aquarian wells, are showing a significant level <coughs> of PFC contamination. Now, the science is such that the federal government at this point, and so the state too, has set a maximum contaminant level of 70 uh, parts per trillion for two compounds, and there are hundreds of PFC compounds. Oh, yeah. And so the question is, uh, when, you, when you speak to them, they will say, oh, the levels you're seeing in these wells are less than these maximum contaminant levels. But the science is emerging. Should we be satisfied with that? I think it's important, you know, EPA's... Aquarium has closed one well. I understand that. Okay. And they're monitoring the other wells. Yes, and they're doing that with our input. And what you've got is you've got private <coughs> companies with their own bottom lines that they have to satisfy, but we here are the public that have a, a broader interest. So it's important to, to make sure that interest is taken care of, I think. Mark, I want to mention that, um, just so everybody here, um, Let's try to stay with this budget. Sure. I appreciate you explaining these things. Sure. Oh, there were public meetings and hearings that if you wanted to attend, you could go and ask some questions, Sonny. Um, this isn't a, I don't think this is the place to debate this. We're not debating. Uh, it, just a little just... information, okay, but, but try to, you know, not get down too far into the weeds with the, with the explanations. I, I, just to try to keep it um, focused on budget. Sure. Closer to budget than, than going off into uh, you know other tangents all over the sure, place. Sure, that's uh, fine. Please, if if everybody would please do that. Thank you. Um, Sonny, are you done with your questions for now? I'm just in this area. Still, I've got other questions that will come up. Oh, okay, okay, that's all right. Anybody um, else have something to say? Yes. <laughs> Seeing none. Oh, Tim. I appreciate the work <coughs> you've done to. Uh, address uh, public health concerns, especially with guiding water. Um, I'm happy to watch the selected meetings and uh, keeping their uh, eyes on that potential very, even deadly problem. Correct. But we're here to talk about legal. And uh, so I'm going to stay focused on that. I do appreciate the, uh, the stuff that, that, that I see, uh, as I said. Uh, you have been reorged. You were once working directly for the selectmen, and now you're not. Is that correct? 
I'm my uh, direct supervisor is the town manager at this point as of the uh, second half of this year. No, it happened in July, July I think. Right? Just kind of, I noticed that at the time. Um, <clears throat> the, uh, that was also the same time, I believe, approximately the same time, that the selectmen uh, chose to, uh, I believe Mr. Bean's phrase was, initiate a tort against the state to reimburse expenses at the beach. You know what I'm talking about? I'm, I'm, I'm aware of the selectmen's direction, certainly. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> whether that has been filed or not is public knowledge, so I'm sure you don't mind answering the question. Has it been filed? No. Not yet. So we're looking at five months after the fact that the selectman directed the filing of the tort, which it still hasn't occurred. I also note that in your other activities, in addition to assisting the planning board, you also assist assessing, correct? Uh, I certainly, I assist uh, a lot of <coughs> every department. But assessing actually has a subline item in it, uh, sub subline item actually, <laughs> for $100,000 for outside expenditures, which are actually litigation expenditures. And, and, and you basically handle that for them, right? Uh, not you entirely. Hire the outside outside not, counsel? Not or? entirely. Okay. It's, it's a mix of myself and outside counsel. Yeah. Okay, fine. But that hundred thousand dollars is like part of your activity relative to tax abasement and stuff. It's uh, expert expenses, basically. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now I have a, I have another question, which I think uh, might be, um, uh, in my opinion, unnecessarily controversial to bring up on camera, which I've been trying to seek an answer to. Uh, I haven't been able to get through the bureaucracy of, of the protocol to get to it. I hope to do so subsequently, so I'm not going to pursue it here tonight, okay? Because I am trying to do this gently. Um, so, with that said, I want to point out that there are a number of questions that I have, all of which are uh, most likely controversial or confidential in nature and appropriately only asked in non-public session, requested in non-public session, the request was denied, and thus the information to us to make a decision denied. So I consider myself to be uh, denied sufficient information to make a proper judgment on this line item. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Jones. Sonny, go ahead. Yeah, I had some questions. You've got 14 active suits. I've been on the Budget committee for a number of years. This is the first time I've seen this. <coughs> as according to your records, as through October, outside council is one hundred thirty-six thousand dollars. Right. Actually, just so you know, I give the the list of cases that I provided you include litigation that is tax matters and non-tax matters. I, if you if you add the two together at this juncture, it's like uh, twenty-two. Okay, but the point is, you've already spent 136000 on outside council, and those are ongoing. We, that's only through October. How much revenue do you expect the town to receive from all this litigation? I, I uh, can't tell you that uh, in terms. I any? can't. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Well, I can't I get into that. Well, I remember the suits against Aquarium, where they, after the suit was settled, they simply billed the town the legal expenses, and our water bill went up. I well, that, that isn't always the case. Let me give you an example. <coughs> when Aquarian went to, uh, wanted to go from uh, quarterly billing in, a re in, in advance to month. monthly billing in arrears, uh, we uh, had some uh, problems with that that we're going to, dramatically affect the town, especially when it came to payment of hydrants. And, uh, and so uh, our efforts involved in that resulted in, of course, in-house expenditures of time, but also acquiring expenditures of attorney's fees. One of the terms of the resolution of that was that Aquarian would not charge the attorney's fees it incurred uh, to the customer base. Okay, I still have the question. You obviously won't, can't 
Can't give me an answer on revenues. I've got another issue. You're well aware of the water problems in the town, right? Well, it, 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 you know, in the summer they hit the eighty percent level, right? The what problem, Sonny? The water. The water. 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 Flooding. Man. You mean yeah. flooding? Okay. Yeah. okay. No, not flooding. Treatment of water and wastewater water treatment. treatment. I'm, what I'm getting at is the hotel that's going up on Liberty on Exeter Road. Okay. That was on a piece of property that had a restriction on the deed, no hotels. That deed was waived, okay? Now they're building a hotel that's going to have 150 <coughs> parking spaces. That, that, you know how much water is, and wastewater is going to be resolved? That's not, that? That, that had, Sonny, Sonny, I know you have a concern about that, but this is not... Well, this, is, this went right through the water, right through the... For the selectmen. Okay, that's. This is not. We're not going to talk about that right now, son. Okay, I'm sorry. Well, but when are you going to talk about it? We're not going to talk about it right now. Okay, that is not something that is appropriate. Well, I think it is, but that's that's your choice. Okay, that's my choice. Thank you. Anything else, Sonny? Yeah. Well, there may be some more. Yet. Is there other questions for him? Any other questions for any? For uh, Attorney Gerald, seeing none, uh, we're ready to vote in that case. Those in favor of this budget, we have, I'm going to call them out for you, Barbara. <coughs> we have David, we have Mike Plouffe, we have Steve LeBranch, we have Regina Barnes. Against, we have uh, Sonny. We have Brian and we have Steve Henderson against and abstain would be Tim Jones. So could you give me the numbers on that, Barbara? That's so good. Mr. Kravitz, Mr. Lapham, Mr. Henderson, and who's that's the other? That's it. That's it for the no's. For the nays, though, that's it. And then you have Mr. Jones abstaining. So you have four, three, <coughs> one. Okay, so that passed. Thank you very much. Mark. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Mark, I expect we'll be revisiting that vote when I get more information. Hopefully, if you get through this protocol, I'll be able to get some of that information. Mark, one question before you leave. This sure. confidential uh, confidential document that you gave each of these committee members is has to be remains confidential, correct? Yes, please. Can I ask okay. a question about that, Mr. Go Chairman? ahead. I wish you would. You know, I haven't seen anything in that confidential memo that is not public information. So I don't know why it's confidential. Well, let me put it this way. Uh, the fact of each of these matters being a public, a, an item that is already filed and in a court doesn't mean it's compiled in a document like this. So it's or a compilation. It's the compilation, not the facts, but the confidential. Is that what you're saying? Correct. So we can disclose the facts, <coughs> but not the compilation. That's, that's it. Great. Thank you very much.